Hello and welcome back. Well, as I said, you saw in my excitement why. You see, because I, one person who don't want people to make apologies because they worked hard for their money. And why should you? I'm one person who wants to see at least five true billionaires in Ghana before God calls me. And why not? Anytime there's a Forbes list of billionaires, there's never a Ghanaian in there. And why? We should be able to produce billionaires. However, to produce billionaires, you must start much, much early. So anytime I see a young man doing something in the right direction, I get excited. And I thought, why not? Whatever help or whatever encouragement you give this person so that he might fulfill my dream of seeing a billionaire, it should be done. That's why I'm here to talk to Godwin Kwesi Mate. He's one young man who has started early. And I believe, you know, he will reach far. And that's why we're here to get inquisitive anyway. Find out where he was born and all the la di da di da And it's going to be exciting because he's an exciting chap. Godwin, welcome to PM Express. Thank you very much. PM Personality Profile, which Talk is becoming, becoming uh, one of the best segments in uh, the PM series. Okay. But uh, Godwin, you, you were born in Kufrodia. Yes. But I know my little history tells me that you never even grew up there. You were no. quickly whisked off to Nigeria. <laughs> That's correct. You know, wh wh why is that? Um, w w I was not there when I was born. Exactly. So, <laughs> 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 so I had to grow up to come and hear the story. Uh, my parents said um, things were difficult mm -hmm. in their days. I learned they used to queue for sugar or something. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they had to find alternatives. Yeah, get it. Yes. Yeah, so migration setting, and then they had to travel. So that was it. And then we got to Nigeria, and then I started growing up there. So basically all your basic school and preschool, everything was done in Nigeria? Absolutely. What's it like to go to school in Nigeria? <laughs> um, it's fun. It's a mixture of uh, you come up with you you come up with so many virtues. You see, the, the reason why I say that is you know we have this perception of Nigerians being uh, a bit more aggressive than Ghanaians. Now you're very placid for uh, you know somebody educated <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, you didn't get the aggressive traits. You seem to still have the Kofuidia trait where you're still laid back, or it's hidden and comes out when as and when. I think um, it's a, it's a, there's a balance, mm -hmm. but if I will look at the aggressiveness and um, being the laid-backness, I would say it's even more 60-40. I think I, I'm still aggressive. Okay. I, I think so. Yeah. I just I'm able to you keep probably switch for the cameras. in between. You keep in calm for the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. If I'm discussing with you or we are winding, unwinding or hanging out, I'm not really aggressive. Okay. Uh -huh. But uh, in my thought processes, I think I'm aggressive. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, because I find it very intriguing, with your friends who, you know, stayed in Kofrodia or stayed in Ghana, well, you probably didn't have any friends, but you came back and met them anyway. Exactly. In, the, in discussion, what, what's the difference in schooling in Nigeria and schooling in Ghana? What, what's the difference? I think that that's a, that's a very interesting question. If you school in Nigeria, you you learn a lot of things, but the environment, the environment, you know, environment has a lot to do with your makeup, mm -hmm. who you become, how you, yeah. you your makeup. Yeah. So the environment is a bit hostile and um, very competitive. I use the word very, very competitive. I see. Even in class, you, you see the people have a certain dominion mindset. Some, everyone wants to lead. <laughs> you you, you, so you have to stick to the books exactly. so you come up from. Exactly. So to be an uh, exceptional student and to, to, to outdo your competitors, which are your classmates, mm -hmm. it, it calls for more. That's why I said it calls for aggression. It calls for discipline. Uh, and it depends on actually the kind of parents you have to because you can be in a very good environment and have a very responsible parents. Mm -hmm. You can be in a very hostile environment or not too friendly or not too calm environment. And you can have parents who can tame you through, you know, and, mm. and make sure that you come out clean. I so, see. yes. Let's, uh, talking about parents, are you mommy's boy or your daddy's boy? You look like a mommy's boy, but you, let, me, let me hear your answer. I look like <laughs> both boys. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm very emotional about my mom because of some of the extraordinary sacrifices that she made um, while I was growing up. Wow. 
Yes. Wow. So I'm very did you, emotional. Did you grow up with mom and dad or you grew up predominantly with mom? I grew up with them okay. right from scratch. Okay. Too. Yeah. Okay. So but I you talked about sacrifices on mom. Yes. Yeah. Well, I want to hear some. Mommy's a, mommy's a sweet, I know. A couple <laughs> of very strategic ones. I always say that when I hear people ask me, are you sure you've ever, you've ever suffered? Or are you sure you, you're not born with a silver spoon? I tell her, look. I was no, there was no silver spoon, no wooden spoon, no ladder. No I was born bare hands. Probably I was the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> so um, things were very tough. And um, it got to a point, I was, I was exceptional in school. I was brilliant. That's a fact. Okay. okay I was an A student. Okay, so... And in Nigeria. In Nigeria, So yes. it was a proper A because the competition is king. Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it got to a point, we could not pay my school fees. Wow. And in my school, um, when, you don't, when you're not able to pay your, for your school fees, they make you kneel in the sun. You kneel down in the sun. Oh my uh, you have to, after the assembly, they will mention the names of those who are owing, and then you will be kneeling down in the assembly till probably 2 o'clock or something, then they will disperse you. So why did I come to school? I just came to kneel down and go home. It doesn't make sense. Oh my God. And, but the principal saw excellence in me. So he took interest and said, he liked this young boy. He thinks that he, 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 he knows something. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he's a bit uh, diplomatic about my case. Okay. But it got to a point they could not help. Like when we went to write our WAEC, when I look at those figures, we had to pay then that we could not pay now. I just feel good pimples all, all over me. It was nothing, really. Like if you are going to write a WAEC and you are told to pay seven Ghana CDs, I mean, is that ridiculous? Mm -hmm. But we could not pay. And my mom was teaching in a private school who has not also been paid for months. So she had her, um, this wrapper, this expensive wrapper. As in cloth? Yes, there cloth, which, yes, which she was given as a gift. Well, my dad is a pastor, so sometimes people come to see him and then they give my mom something. And so she had to pack everything and go sell them. And decided that, apart from teaching, she will make what we call kenke. They, they know it more as donkono. Mm -hmm. To sell kenke, um, to make sure that I'm able to go through the school. But during this white time... What do I, they call it in Nigeria? Donkono. As, as the children say, donkono. Yes, but, but they, they call it don. They add N, donkono. Donkono. That's, probably that's how they heard it. Oh, I so see. So they call it donkono, but we call it donkono here. Yes. Yes. I see. So um, with that... Everybody paid for the WAEC. They've com computed the names. And the, the examiner or the WAEC coordinator mm -hmm. in that school had already taken the list going to the state capital. Because we're not living in, state, in the state capital. Okay. Going to the state capital to go and submit, submit the, everything. The final. Yes. So he was actually on his way. He had, I was just sitting down under a tree crying. Um, uh, I, just ha I just heard that my mom is calling. We didn't have phones then. So my mom usually call a landline, my principal's analog phone. Mm -hmm. So she, I heard that I had a call. They came to call me that I had a call. And I was a prefect, so I was popular. And that was more embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was difficult and strict prefect. I came people easily. So and you can't pay so and you can't pay for your, so you, for your for <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the shame and everything. I was just there. I heard that my mom said, they said my mom wants to talk to me. I ran on top speed and got to the office and picked her up. My mom said she has been able to borrow money all around and, and the person who bought her cloth and everything has, has paid. So uh, I can come to the school now and come and take the money. Oh. And while I was about leaving, I was stepping out of the principal's office. She called again and said, I should not worry, that she will come over herself. So I was there and my mom took what you call a kada, the bike, mm -hmm. and came to the school. And so the principal had to call the coordinator to come back, okay? And the coordinator was not driving. He was also using a bus. So it means that he had to alight and get another bus and to back to school. Came back and said, ah, this is the money we have. And the money was not even complete still. Hey. He's serious. So the principal had to, had to top, up. top up. Yes, he said, for me, he would do something. So he had to get money and top up. And then they used the pencil to add my name to the, they had this, the way that thing looked like when you are generating bank draft or yes, yes, statement. Yes, That's yes. how they computed mm -hmm. it. So they had to use pencil to write my name under it. Guess what? After the WAEC, I was the best for my set. Whoa. Came out with distinction. Whoa. So that was a motivation. I just knew that 
we were so poor, I had to do something for myself. I just had to learn and come out well. The figures you're talking are not big. Daddy was a pastor, and we know in churches there's always collection here and there. Okay, mom's excuse is that maybe she hasn't gotten paid yet, but daddy should have. You know, pretended there was a miracle happening and people would have put something in the box. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we Africans, we like, we like a miracle here and there. Okay. Uh, if you pay in dollars, the Lord will bless you in dollars. And they will Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dad didn't have money because don't think every pastor has money. It's not true. Even in Ghana, it's mm -hmm. absolutely not true. You know, there are elders and deacons in churches who are not paid. So, you will probably have to do something for yourself. Mm -hmm. And even some full-time pastors, some full-time pastors in some churches, by their principle, they don't pay. They're not doing miracles. They tell you, ah, use your faith <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> They're not doing miracles. They have to. Uh, uh, well, they have to maybe the miracle will bring miracle. the money. <laughs> they have to do some small miracles. Though. And even when you can do miracles, it also depends on the kind of church you pastor. When you pastor a very poor church, you when you perform all the miracles, everybody will be excited, but there will be no offering. <laughs> That's a fact. So anyway, you topped the uh, Waiyak. I topped the Waiyak, and that was that was an inspiration. In fact, that is. yes, it was it was great. I I, I was a bookworm. Wow. This is I think I read less than then. I mm. used to read, so I even wrote um, A levels, and then I um, also passed, and then I went to the university and all that, and then. I came out. A bit of secondary life in Nigeria. Now, if you go to secondary school in Ghana, I mean, those, I don't know how your system works. Nowadays, you go to Form 1, you know, and you were literally a slave to all the seniors. You know, go and fetch water, go and do my bed, go and scrub the bathhouse, this, that. Do they, is that the same system, you know, going to secondary school in Nigeria? Yes. Oh, At yeah. least my secondary school. Okay. You know, there are levels of secondary school. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a typical example. You know, um, when some people want to maybe insult you, when some kids want to insult you in, in Nigeria, I don't know if they do the same in Ghana, they will say, your father. Okay. Okay, like, uh -huh. oh, mommy, oh, uh -huh. papa, yeah. your father. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But when you go to a very plush school, they will say, your dad. <laughs> they polish it, you know. <laughs> it's, really, it's really romantic. <laughs> it's not an insult to me. They tell me your dad. I go like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But in a very typical school, like, your <laughs> father, they will, the age. It, it comes with some... You know, <laughs> yes. So maybe in my school, it, it was exactly the same. But I was a day student. Okay. So usually you don't oh, yeah. experience that much yeah. as like those who stay in the hostel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and when you are popular, then probably the authorities are interested in you. Like teachers know you, principals know you. The seniors don't like bothering you much because they mm. think you can report them and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So those are some of their favors. So you got uh, away. You got away mm, with that. I escaped a little. Yeah. Just that sometimes when you are late, you you have to go and hope. As punishment, oh, okay. You weed and all those things. Also, oh, it's the same across uh, yeah, yeah, South Africa. There's not much difference between Ghana and Nigeria. I uh, see. From the way you're saying, oh, you know, yeah, it looks, it looks like. Uh, no then university. So you did university in Nigeria or yes, university? Yes, I did in Nigeria. And then you, that's why you did your. Uh, yes, ICT. I did first degree in computer science before I came to Ghana. When I completed, I came to Ghana in 2009. I did uh, went to Gimpa for. But well, that's the amazing story. So. Are your parents still in Nigeria or they here now? Yeah, yeah, no, they moved, they moved together. Who moved first, your parents or you? I moved first. We had no lorry fare to even move. I had to be bundled and pushed. My so parents, you, borrow, you borrowed a suitcase? Yes. And then it was not a suitcase. A suitcase is... is, uh, is suppose, you know, that's, that's that. Uh, this <laughs> is that's your dad. This is father. <laughs> this is father. You, you get it. You get the difference. <laughs> There was no suitcase. Uh -huh. there, it was a bag, a, an old traveling bag. My parents borrowed from my neighbor that they want to pack my things in it and, and bundle me away to Ghana to go and see if uh, we can change our world. Whoa. You know? Yeah. Whoa. So you hop on a bus? Yes. To... My dad specifically said that he, he had prayed and God said, I should go home first. Okay. Because everybody was really tired, actually. So uh, they just said, my dad said... The so what was your going. first point? Uh, straight to Kofordia or to Accra? My first point, I think it was to do. Did you know anybody around there? Uh, had some family? No, but my dad has spoken to my uncle okay. that uh, I'll be coming to Ghana. In fact, my dad came earlier to oh. visit my, my uncle and explain to him that I'm, I'll finish school, so they want me to come home first. I'm just going to stay with him in Kofordia. My, my, my uncle is an elder. In Church of Pentecost in mm -hmm. Kofodia. 
So he knew that I was coming, so I had his number. So when I got here, I called him. Then he told me, I should, I should ask them in the station, I'm going to Kofodia. So I got a bus to Kofodia. So this is your first time in Ghana? First, as an adult? Yeah, as an adult. Yeah. First time in Ghana. Everything looked different. I had this bushy hair, <laughs> you know, like that. And then got to Kofodia, and then I took a taxi. Uh, and the taxi rank and then got home and then here like here I am the first time of my life I'm seeing my uncle my cousins and all that wow yes. wow 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 so what was your plan I mean when you're coming what, what, what were you going to do you know there's gold in Ghana I'm going to find some more. <laughs> there's a big office in Ghana I'm going to work there what was your plan okay uh, I was a bit clueless a bit mm, that's a fact because I was going to a totally new environment mm -hmm. So, two things were on my mind. I knew that I knew something that I can sell. I knew that I knew something that I can sell. Mm -hmm. That I had acquired some certain level of knowledge that can bring me money. That is one. Then I play saxophone. So, I, in fact, in Nigeria, I used to... Uh, you know, when you are broke, you become creative. You, you, you discover yourself. There are a lot of talents you start poli polishing. You make them... You know. So, I used to go for some gigs here and there to play for weddings and programs and then get some coins on me or another. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought, okay, when I get to Ghana, I will at least start with that. I didn't think of what to eat because I knew that at least in my uncle's house, there food. are many mansions. <laughs> I will think there will be food. Uh -huh. So I was thinking, okay, at least I will start with the sacks, go to some church. I went to a few churches. I played nicely. They congratulated me. Some of them even saw the sacks for the first time. They were happy. I wasn't paid, so I trekked home. And I said, okay, there must be a plan B. <laughs> this is <thing's> not working. <laughs> so with that, I, I think I, I began to look around. And then uh, I went to a church, ICGC, Kofodia. Mm -hmm. Then it used to be Faith Sanctuary. It's headed by Pastor Dixon to force upon. And then um, he welcomed me. I, I think that man is great. I think, I think he, in fact, I know he's a fantastic father. See, so he did a lot for me. He called me to his office after the Sunday service. Mm -hmm. He made them, you know, talk to me that I should come to his office the next day. Another thing is that that instrument actually is prestigious. It attracts attention mm -hmm. if you can play well. Mm -hmm. the and he's going he's gonna to play for us. Don't worry. <laughs> he's going to play for us. So don't worry. His bum is going to play the sax. He's got, he's got a really nice sax sitting on the shelf. <laughs> so with that... Um, I went to his office, we spoke, and then he said, okay, what can I do? What do I have? What can I offer? You know, it, 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 it's like um, an Elisha walking into your home and saying, what do you have? Mm -hmm. You see, I always think <coughs> you should have something. Mm -hmm. Some people go to church and they say that the church is not helpful. Sometimes it's because you have nothing. Nothing to offer. If you multiply zero, you get zero. Let's move to uh, Kofuridia Polytechnic. I mean, you set up the affairs website. Yes. And for a long time, that's one I think I experience. You worked without getting paid. Yes. So with that, uh, he told me that, okay, he, he knows about Kofuda Polytechnic. Uh, because I said I read computer science, mm -hmm. I, can do pro I can program some softwares and all that. He said, okay, why don't I give it a shot at Kofuda Polytechnic? I should just talk to a few people there. There were some people, uh, there's a guy, Albert, he was in our church. He was one of the media team, those who project the lyrics for mm -hmm. Sunday service. He was uh, already a lecturer in Kofuda Polytechnic. So okay. he called him for me to talk to him. We met and he said, okay, I can come to the school. And all that. So I went there and met the HOD, Mr. Martin Ofer. So he listened to my story and he believed in me. I think I sounded convincing mm -hmm. enough. And, and that's one thing I appreciate about Ghanaians. They are not too suspicious to give you a try. Mm. You see, they are willing to give you a try. Nigerians have been more suspicious? Yes, it's a fact. And it's, and it's needful. When I'm in Nigeria, I'm, I'm a bit suspicious more than when I'm in Ghana. It's a fact. There's uh. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. I'm more careful. I see. Yes, yes. So uh, he gave me an opportunity. He said, okay, if I'm in and I said I'm into computing, they should give me a try. I should, that's a PC, do something, let's see. Wow, okay. So I had to get a PC, come up with some few, a simple website. He saw, he said, oh, he thinks that I can do something. So, um, but this is a, state institution. He doesn't control everything. So what he can tell me is that they'll be recruiting probably about five, six months later. Normally they put in the newspaper, you apply and all mm -hmm. that. So you advise that I should be coming regularly so that 
my face will be familiar. <laughs> <laughs> when they start to apply this. Well, <laughs> so I said, no problem. So I took it upon my... Even if he didn't say so, I had planned that I'm going to work there. And whether I'm paid or not, I'm going to stay there. So I went back and I told my uncle that. The man told me that I should be coming to work, but they are not paying me. He said I should go. So my uncle used to give me. Then he used to spend that Ephraim Amu notes, those 20,000, 20, those big, big ones. So he used to give me. He said, okay, I should go. But it was still tough because my parents were still broke. And I was concerned. So sometimes I even want to gather the little one CD, 50 pesos, two CD my, my uncle gave me to send to my parents. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I have to trek. If I'm many times, I did that. I'll trek from Kinke Factory to Kofi Rapport Technic. How far? About two kilometers, three? I'm not very good at measuring distance, okay. no kilometers. But it's far. It's far enough for any normal human being to trek. Wow. It's far. I'll get there sweating. The, uh, the, and, 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 <laughs> So, uh, the Harvard guy, I taught them something. When I got there, I observed that they also, of course, knowledge is progressive. They also didn't know certain things about computing, database and programs. So, I, w I became smarter. So, I said, okay, let me teach these guys. I'll make some money from them, even though they are lecturers too. They also want to learn more. So, I organized a small class for two of them and taught them a few things I knew. They appreciated it and paid me, paid me 400000 which is now for the city. I went straight to the market to buy a bicycle. <laughs> because <laughs> life was hard trekking. <laughs> you know, I was used to trekking, but I used to trek to school. Well, uh -huh. in secondary school in Nigeria. Uh -huh. I used to, we used to use the railway line. The railway line was our steps Just to get to school. There was a rail that takes you directly to school. So I was a bit, but when I got here, it was harder because the terrain, the, the sun and the terrain. Okay, then you're walking it, alone. There's and walking no alone. You know, when you are, when you are five it's friends it's who are in the similar and circumstance, and, yeah. it's, it's comforting. You can, can cope. But when you are now lonely, <laughs> you have to trek. That's when you start thinking. So it was more difficult. I see. So I bought a bicycle and then I started commuting and I started working for free for about five or six months or so or more before they said, okay, they've put a vacancy in the newspaper. I should apply. And I applied. And I was not given the job on a silver platter. I still went through normal interview. Well, I did. Yes. That's all that you've done for them. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 I still went through, I did practicals, but I was, I, I came out excellently too. Okay. So it helped the sentiment. This mm -hmm. guy has been around. He's been helpful. Once a while, he does this for once, and he still did well. Definitely, you know, psychologically, mm -hmm. we think he, we yeah. want to give him a scale of a preference mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. you know, people we don't know. Mm -hmm. So I got a job, and then I started working as a technician, computer technician. So in a computer lab where we fix PCs for people we do. Then I felt that, you see, success begins with good thinking. Mm -hmm. I think that all that time, I knew that I was successful. I knew I would, I would get better. Uh, that's why, so all the time, I'm, 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 I, pro I probe my mind. I try to ask myself questions. What can I do in this environment? How can I be more relevant? I can't just be a computer technician there here for too long because that's not really what I want. I'm not comfortable, really. I just wanted something to start with. So I would look like, uh, do you guys have a website? No. I remember I tried designing something simple when I came the first time. Okay, I approached him. I can get the school on the web. It's important. He said, okay. We don't believe in talking. Do it. Oh, I started going from department to department. I typed a letter myself as a company and signed and said, um, uh, request for information for a website. So I take it to <laughs> faculty to faculty, <laughs> dean to dean, and say, I need information. I'm gathering information to design a website. I got it. I did it. He liked it. We moved to the rector. Then was Dr. Afrani. So we went to him. He was impressed. So oh, this is good. And it was good. It was good enough then. Mm -hmm. So uh, he told me that, how can we get this thing live? I said, oh, I can host it. I can go to Accra and meet the companies that do the dots, dot edu, dot gh, the Ghanaian extensions. Mm -hmm. and, and then he, they got me money. And I came to Accra. I came to register the website. Went back, hosted it, uploaded it, hosted it, and launched it. They were excited. They were now World Wide Web. Yes. So now <laughs> Kofura Poly was www.kofurapoly.edu.gh. It was fun. And, I, and then, not quite long. You see, when you are very relevant in a place, mm -hmm. I think creation has a way of doubling your steps of progress. Mm -hmm. Not quite long. They made me a web administrator. Because I, I, it seems this guy is more relevant in this thing mm -hmm. than fixing pieces. So uh, they made me a web, web administrator and also gave me a honorarium of thousand dollars 
Wow. Whoa. Wow. Now, this is shocking. <laughs> Keep the thousand dollars. I'm going to take a break here. <laughs> when I come back, we're going to find out where the dream of WebSoft development came from. And also, we're going to hear the sax. And uh, that's a touching story. So, all the young guys who are sitting there thinking it's all over, it is not. Sacrifice your six months, you know, work with your heart, make yourself relevant. Who knows? Maybe I'll be sitting in your office talking to you. Stay tuned. We're coming back. Well, hello and welcome back. And as promised, I don't know what's with these cyber techies and uh, mu uh, musical instruments. The last time I interviewed another cyber techie, there was all guitars playing and everything. I'm here now and it's the saxophone. And I'm not going to leave until he plays the saxophone. And then we continue talking. So he's going to give us one tune. After we're going to find out where all this dream began and where the dream is going. So stay tuned while Godwin takes it away. <laughs> Buddy, give us a tune. Mm. Give me a song. Any song. Great, great, great is thy faithfulness. Because obviously you... Great I think is you, thy Oh, I, think, I like that. Uh, yeah, you owe it to him. Okay, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. talk about this sax a little bit before we go into this interview. God, there's just too many things to press. I mean, how do you know when and where to press it without, look, <laughs> without looking at it? Well, actually, it's a very simple instrument. Oh, what are you talking about? It is. It is. Um, it just looks scary. It, it does. It, does it looks look too very, busy. It, it looks busy. It looks menacing. Yes, but it's right. a beautiful piece of equipment. Yes, it's, it's simple. I started with a recorder, a plastic recorder. Okay. 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 Which is much more simple to you know play around. It works with your mental consciousness. It's easier to 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 be able to go through that. But um, with sax, probably it was easier for me because I started with the flute, the the recorder, mm -hmm. plastic recorder in secondary school. I used to mm -hmm. play in, ch in the chapel. Mm -hmm. Then from there, uh, I moved to this. I actually play other instruments, but I'm, I have um, a passion for this one. A lot of passion. That's if I'm watching a movie and they play. Within three seconds, sax. I'll rewind it. <laughs> I tell you. So, getting to know what to press comes with, I think, training. I okay, see. yes. The, you just have to be put through. You have a lot of. I mean, you, have you must have about keys. 20 things to press. Well, about 25 or 26. Is one, you have one, two, three, four, five. This two is one. You can, when you press this alone, it gives you a different sound. When you press this together, it gives you a different sound. This is a different key, this is a different key, this, 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 everything all over. And then you have, you have, you even have keys here, which that you play with your palms. Okay, you play this with your palms, and then you have keys here. And you still have keys, you use your thumb. Maybe I need to take up saxophone in <laughs> part of my retirement, you know. It's a, it's a fantastic <laughs> instrument. <clears throat> it's great. Thanks for playing that. But we don't, now I'm going to go back to you now get a thousand dollars, you know. Thousand dollars? Yes. Wow. Uh, for doing the website, right? Yes, doing the website, being the first in the history of the Polytechnic to pioneer a, a website, an official website mm -hmm. for the institution without being called to do so. That was your own idea? My own idea. So where was the... Uh, is that where the dream of WebSoft designs came from? Uh, yes and no. The, the dream started from two ways, okay? okay. When I bought a bicycle, the reason why I bought a bicycle was because I wanted to comb the town. I wanted to see how the town runs, mm -hmm. what, what, 
I was just identifying opportunity problems. Mm -hmm. So I observed that most of the institutions there didn't have a website. Most of the processes that they do there are traditional, mm -hmm. rigorous old way of doing things. You go to a pharmacy store, you want to buy something, and they're opening books. It wasn't that bad for some of the pharmacies, but there were a lot, of, a lot more that needs the, the automation of mm -hmm. their processes. So then I began to think, okay, why don't I create um, a solution for these people here? Okay. And the excitement that came from the surprise I got from the management of the polytechnic that they appreciated what I did, mm -hmm. I mean, fueled my desire to extend it. Extend it. I started first because I was broke, so I needed a solution. But as, as I began to look at the picture bigger, I felt, okay, there are a lot more people who are also broke too. Mm -hmm. So if I can start this, I'll need more hands. I can help more people also get out of penury. Mm -hmm. So then I need to get a company. And I didn't have much for branding. So let me get a simple name. Once you hear it, you can start suspecting what I do. <laughs> if, if I called myself Apple, I would need a lot of explanation for you to think of a PC. <laughs> you get it. Samsung didn't start with electronics or galaxies. Mm -hmm. They were selling vegetables in 1938. I see. Samsung, yes. I see. Yes, they were selling vegetables and fruits. Mm. You see, so it took me a long So I said, okay, web, website, software, website, websoft. It just inspired, okay, websoft. That's all. So I started, came to Registrar General to register it. I was still working in the Polytechnic. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. So what I do is that, during my break, 12 to 1, I take advantage of that. I run with my bicycle through town. I approach boutiques, shops. I, got a, I can get you a POS. I can fix something for you. I go to intravenous. There are a lot of companies around. I can develop your website for you for a very small amount of money. And then they began to get interested. And the leverage of working with Kodapo Technic, the prestige mm -hmm. of working with Kodapo was also a strength. So I'll tell you that, look, I'm the web administrator for Kofuda Polytechnic. Log on and see. Log on and check it out. So right at your desk, there was a woman like that. It was a vocational school. Mm -hmm. So I told her, she didn't believe me, especially the fact that my accent was Nigerianly strong. But, no, she had but, a, but now you don't have a Nigerian accent. You think so? Some people still say I do. I don't know. No, no, no. I think you're much lighter in your tonation, but let's go on. <laughs> okay. So she was like, no. I said, no. I, mean, I can give you the no contact number of my HOD, mm -hmm. call him, find out who is this gentleman. And she actually collected it and did, and I was glad. I was in glad front of you? In front of me. Hey. It's serious. So, but I was happy. That at least she <laughs> took the step, the effort. Some wouldn't have given me. Yeah, just so, yeah. yeah, so he did that, and then I, she did that, and then she got a good response. And I also showed her the website. She said, okay, I should bring a proposal. That's how it started. I see. Yes. So your first office was in Koforia? Yes, it was in Koforia. Um, Sneet, Sneet complex. In fact, I didn't start from Sneet. I started from my uncle's bedroom. And I had no computer. When the thousand dollars came, I only paid my tithe and shipped the rest to Nigeria. So I, I used nothing out of that money for myself. Because the situation, my, my younger brother was schooling there. And regularly they would call me that, Messiah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I go like, <laughs> uh, it's not yet time for the ministry. <laughs> <laughs> so when that came, <laughs> I, I called my dad on, my, on the phone and said, guess what? We are rich. <laughs> I'm shipping you dollars, man. And they were happy. So I sent, I sent everything home. I felt uh, if the thousand dollars didn't come, I was still eating. So now that the money has come, I don't, it's not the time to go and buy shirts. No, 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 no. We'll get to that place. So I sent the money You paid home. your tithe out? Yeah, right? I, paid my, I paid my tithe. Very good. Yeah, I paid my tithe. But now I do, I, I've gone, I pay more than all those things. I give more <laughs> than tithe. If you important. prosper more, you, you have to give more than tithe. Tithe is too small. You know, that's my conviction. If you're a Christian, the more you give, the more you, you give see. with a cheerful heart. Yes. Yeah, and cheerful yes. heart is more than 10%. Remember oh, yes. That. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very important. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, I, I got a, a borrowed desktop. I had to borrow it from somebody. Mm -hmm. One of the students in school. He had a problem with the machine, the computer. Okay. And he had to fix, uh, he took it to a technician that told her that she has to buy another board. And she didn't have a lot of money. So when she brought it to me, I was able to fix it without her buying the board. board. So she said, oh, she has even lost interest in the machine already because he's in that. And I said, oh, I've done his work. And he said, okay, then I can keep it for a while. Really? <laughs> the, the that, beginning of business? This is good news. <laughs> so I gra grabbed the thing home and... In my uncle's bedroom, I, I fixed it somewhere, and then I used one of the chairs to sit down, and I'll be programming on the ground. Okay, that's where I started from. 
I see. Yes. I see. And at the time, did you know, you know, it's going to get this big? Initially, I didn't. But as time went on, I began to, the, the picture became clearer, sharper, and broader. I began to see, okay, wow, it's possible. It's possible. One of the strengths I enjoyed from my parents, even though they were not born rich or they didn't raise me rich, was the mentality of possibilities. My dad is a crazy faith, faith person. Mm -hmm. So I used to wonder, okay, if you have this much faith, why are we broke? That was my mm -hmm. personal mm -hmm. you know, confusion. Mm -hmm. You see, but my dad used to tell me that we did not get this faith early. That's why we are giving it to you. So run with it because faith will recreate your future. Okay. My dad always said that. Wow. So then I began to see, okay, this thing is possible. It's possible. I needed more hands. So with those small, small jobs, I still eat from home. I don't pay prepaid. I don't pay what I don't pay. So it was almost 100% profit. Mm -hmm. And one of the fantastic uh, benefits of starting an IT business is that you don't need huge capital, especially if you're doing simple things like websites and you are smart and you can program softwares. You can start small as a freelance. Mm -hmm. It won't take you much. Just a laptop of your bag, you can run. But you need more than that to get where I am. I see. Yeah. I see. I mean, the story is getting exciting. And so now, what, what, what's, how many staff have you got? I have 19. And I've um, interviewed 10 and we're giving them letters. And they'll be resuming. We'll, we'll be training them, starting training from next week. Ah, interview. I like that. Now, yes. The freshers coming from the institutions here, I mean, yes. you interviewed them. Yes. On, on terms of their IT skills, do you think they are sharp or do you think you know, they need it's, working on? It's a mixture of both. What would you say? 50 good, 50 bad? No, I would say 70, 30. 70 good, 70 bad? 70 bad. 30, 30 you can work with? Yes. So institutions are not putting in what they're supposed to? Probably. You see, the institutions were not designed to make you a pro. That's what I think, right mm -hmm. here. Um, all the IT training colleges in Ghana mm -hmm. and even in Nigeria don't make you a uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Don't make you uh, a Bill Gates, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, they just give you basics. The status quo. Yes, they just give you basics. So it, it takes you um, extra effort to work on yourself and, and... And break out of the norm. Exactly. So when they come like that, uh, I can foresee, um, probably by intuition, I can tell when, when I talk to you and I give you certain assignments to do, I can tell that you are trainable. Some come very how, good. How some come... How about me? I mean, am I, am I trainable? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, it probably is possible. If I ask you one question and you answer it well, I would know if it's possible. Yeah, ask me. Are you sure? No, ask me. I mean, there's no harm in trying. Okay. I a job. Mm -hmm. Just a simple logic. Mm -hmm. um, if 10 birds were on the tree and they saw a hunter, mm -hmm. I mean, aiming at them, mm -hmm. and nine decided to fly, how many birds are left on the tree? I'm putting you on the spot. You ten can't birds. you can't phone a friend. You can't call the audience. Ten, ten <laughs> birds are on a tree. Yes, they sighted an, a hunter, mm -hmm. and um, none of them decided to fly. Mm -hmm. How many birds are left on the tree? None. Call the hunter shot the other one. I will repeat the question the last time. Yeah. I said ten birds on the tree. Yes. They saw a hunter. Mm -hmm. None of them decided to fly. How many birds are left on the tree? Nine decided to fly. Yes. How many are left on the tree? Yes. Well, there's one on the tree, but the reason why he didn't fly was because he's got shot. So why wouldn't he fly? Okay, so how, how many are left? One. He, you're wrong. It's still 10. Can I explain? Yeah. They decided Nine to decided fly. to so fly. They haven't flown yet. Decisions are not actions. I've decided I'll go I to... I lost the job. <laughs> I lost the job. I'll stick to my radio business. <laughs> No, you can still... No, that was a joke. <laughs> On a lighter note, it doesn't de really define if you can be a programmer or an IT techie. Uh, I mean, it was just a simple logic. No sweat. No sweat. Anyway, how many of your staff come to work on bicycles? Okay, none. And they're lucky. Uh, they are blessed. <laughs> we actually have official cars. Some of them drive official cars, like head of IT has his own official mm -hmm. car and all that. So it eases down, you know, mobility and other things. So I think, I think they are cool. Some too are coming up. Attitude towards work. I'm attitude a, towards work. Um, their attitude is good because the environment is good. Mm -hmm. They love to stay. Some people stay here too. Yesterday we left here around 1 a.m. Whoa. Yes. 
Absolutely. 1 a.m. And not everybody anyway. A few mm -hmm. of us working on some, some projects. So the attitude is excellent. I think I've just been blessed having the right people. They are very fantastic, I can guarantee you. You hardly have bad nuts around WebSoft. Now, see, with, with IT support, I mean, if I had a IT and you were managing my website and everything, one thing that is crucial is backup service, right? And I think that we've taken customer service for granted. But you being the fresh generation, you know, you should not make the mistakes that you That's know, true. the, the <coughs> That's true. forefathers or forebearers have made. So That's what true. are you making sure to make that, you know, that you, you don't yeah. inherit that bad habit? That's very correct. You see, the first lesson I learned was from a book by Bill Gates, Business at the Speed of Thought. It's in my library in the office. Mm -hmm. Business at the Speed of Thought. I learned very critical lessons from that book. And, and, and apart from that book, my experience in the Ghanaian economy, I mean, also taught me some very strong lessons. For instance, I went to, back then, 2007, 2008, when I was in Kofi and all that, I observed that there, there were companies that were big shots, web software companies that were big shots, developing websites. They were my dream. Mm -hmm. You know, I go to a website, I see their logo, or their tag, I go like, boy, these guys have gone. Mm -hmm. But today they've closed down. And some of the Companies they designed website for them are now my clients that I'm now managing their website. Okay. So I try to find out what happened, what, why that transition. Mm -hmm. Because if I could tell what they did wrong, I could avoid me doing it wrong. So exactly. I don't lose you in the next five years exactly. too. Exactly. You see, so I, I found out that customer service it was one of the major problems. And that's why most people now, most serious businesses don't deal with freelancers. Because they think that you are not very reliable, you are not stable. You can be uh, trusted, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of response yeah. time and uh, reliability, if you have like 200, let's say 50 clients, and you are one guy or two, it's difficult. Yeah. So uh, so I, I saw that, and I bridged that gap. So what we do is, on our website, websofghana.com, we have a live chat that works anytime. We have people chatting with us from Sweden, Spain, Italy, and all that, on different projects, on different partnership deals. So the live chat, and we've trained some of our customers who even have websites, and we support their email services, that anytime you have a problem, your first call should be a live chat because it's the easiest. It's free. You don't pay mm -hmm. for it. Come to our website. There's an online support agent anytime. What's the website? Websoftghana.com. www.websoftghana.com. <coughs> okay. So a lot of customers became happy when we introduced that. So once in a while, you see someone say, I can't check my email or my email bounce back or can you check my mail mm -hmm. quota or I'm doing this. Then they get support. Or you bought a new Samsung, you want to set up your email account, your corporate email account it. You don't need us to drive there. If you, if you cannot follow by live chat, then we'll send a, a, a support a staff to you to help you out. So our response time is getting better. You see, IT is not perfect like heaven. Once in a while, you have down times, you have issues. So that's where the backup you know, comes in. For your so what are you doing? Are you limiting your new clients according to the staff you have so you'll be able to manage it all? Because otherwise you get too many clients and then you go back to square one where, yes, I really want to help you, but I don't have the staff to get you. That's a very intelligent and smart question because um, that's most problem entrepreneurs face. Even multinationals, some multinationals have this challenge mm -hmm. where you have more in your hands than you can chew. So we, we, don't, uh, we check our capacity and use that to look at what best marketing device, marketing strategy to apply. Mm -hmm. For instance, we will not come on TV and run adverts when we know we have only two developers for that kind of, for that kind of service. Because mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can receive more than you can handle. You sure. get it? Huh? Sure. So we do maybe one-on-one -on -one marketing. And if this month, we grew gradual. We're not in a hurry. If we know that from our experience, and we have a project management software that we use to know our timelines, when to deliver, when we are behind schedule, it to give us an alert that you are behind schedule on so, so person's project. So, so when we know that we are full for this month, we don't advertise. And when a customer calls in for that service, we tell you that this is the time you can get it. Sure. Do sure. you get it? Yeah. We make it clear to you. No matter you, how bad it is. No, is matter, it. no matter how good that deal is, we'll let you know. Yeah. Just yesterday, I have a call from a bank, okay, that they needed an animation. We do animations too. Mm -hmm. Okay. For Friday, they are sponsoring a program, they an animation on Friday. And I told them that it is not possible for us at this moment. They were impressed. Rather, I thought they would be disappointed. But the boss there told me that, I would like to work more with you. I like honest people. It's okay. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's also important. So we check yes. our capacity and then we, we receive. Because we have the habit of saying, oh, no problem. Oh, no problem. Oh. And comes Saturday afternoon, it's then still it's not ready. <laughs> you know, we, we have that. Uh, so I think it's a good yeah. way to, yeah. to start uh, yeah. your, your, your business. Yeah. So what, what and what and what do you provide? Okay. Uh, from, the, from my story, obviously mm -hmm. we build websites, mm -hmm. interactive websites, responsive websites, and database-driven sites, and we, we build um, softwares too. People mostly think that we only do websites. It's not true. We do animation. We've done animation for Star Life, TV ad. Our own TV ad, we did it in-house. Okay. We did our own TV ad ourselves. We do motion graphics and, and 3D animations and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we build softwares, customized software. So a company can call and say, ah, we want you to automate our process. We need a software to do this, to do that. They explain to us what they want. So we analyze it, build a software cycle on it, and build a customized software for them. Sometimes buying a software off the shelf has its own disadvantages. It's not customized to your taste. It's too robust. It's sometimes expensive. You don't enjoy close support and mm -hmm. all that. So people consider all that and say, look, let's try these guys. And then we deliver. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we build softwares. And then we do support services too. You have a, a company. It's not so big needing 10 IT guys. Even banks like UT Bank, for example, we power most of their um, services. Mm -hmm. Okay, when, when, when uh, maybe uh, uh, they want to fix a branch, projections and all that, they call us to do it. They outsource all those headaches and we handle it for them. So we do support services, network support and all that. We do that. We do Rather than the company going to hire and pay people. And why would you contract? keep a web developer and pay him 1,000 Ghana CDs when you can pay us a return of 100 Ghana CDs and still enjoy? You can talk to almost 19 people mm -hmm. that can respond. But you, and with diverse ex experience, diverse expertise, compared to employing one human being and paying 1,000 Ghana CD, who may not be able to do all the all things. All the things. You see, because you can't be good at everything. That's a good idea. Yes. That's a good idea. That's yes. a good idea. So what's the next step for WebSouth? Huh. Actually, there is a, I'm setting up a soft group. It's done. It's registered. I have the companies laid out. Mm -hmm. And my dream is to employ 10,000 people in the next eight years. 10,000? Yes, I'm in, working in, on in, it. In the same, in, in the, or you're branching into real estate? No, different industry. Yes, we have, we have Hairsoft. That one is actually live now. We have Hairsoft Solutions, which, where you go and have a groom and a shave. I'm setting up one. At, this one is around Akuma. We're setting one at East Legon, where you can actually go in and you'll be treated as a king. Okay, with card well, systems I'm, I'm and all that. I'm a king and I live near East Legon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are, we are coming closer <laughs> to you. Okay, and that one is Hairsoft Solutions. And we have okay. AgroSoft, where I've gotten some lands. I want to plant mangoes and export them and all that. And I have Imagine Estates, which is one of my strongest dreams, is real estate. But I don't want to start my own real estate with two plots of land, one plot of land, build single room, bedroom, and sell. No. I want to buy a case of land. You see, so I'm using the other companies as a leverage for the group, as a leverage to, to finance the, the estate dream. Okay. Uh, won't the, uh, so what, what would be the speciality for the soft group? Still IT or it's going to be a Greek? Or it's going to be Greek? diverse. The soft group will be known as a, a, a body of diverse expertise. So mm -hmm. if you want very critical IT uh, service, you will get it in soft group through WebSoft. Now, if you want saloon services, consultancy, because the Hairsoft we have, for instance, we have a software that WebSoft built for Hairsoft that manages the place. If you don't come to my saloon for two weeks, I know. The software gives me that information, and we're able to call you or send you an SMS or find out why you have not been there, because we know by now you have grown base, so you should be there. And we are working on a card technology, where when you come, you register, we'll give you a card, okay? Mm -hmm. And with that card, anytime you come, you, generate, you, you, you gain points, points and all that. Okay, it's done, it's done. We are launching, it's because the year is running up. January will roll so all those things one, two, three, the fourth haircut is free. It's free. And apart from that, you, you, you have redeemable prices, other things you can redeem. And mm -hmm. when you have an haircut, you receive a text message to thank you okay. for coming. Okay, that's okay. Nice. so we're doing all those things. Webso I'm using the website as a leverage to help Airsoft do that. And guess what? We just started Airsoft three weeks ago, and we have 106 customers in three weeks. Okay. But aren't you in danger of losing your identity? So that, you see, like, now, if I wanted to do a website, I know, ah, Godwin. But it will get to a point where, well, I don't know, whether it's haircuts, whether it's farming, this, that, so that you lose, okay. that, you know, <laughs> something that I can identify you with. Okay, um, definitely, uh, because one of the companies have taken the lead, 
And that's what people know. Most clients don't call me Godwin. They call me Websoft. Okay. Most clients call mm -hmm. me Websoft. But I'm trying to build a brand that will transcend me, that will go beyond just me. So that even when I'm not there, the corporation exists and mm -hmm. is still respected. You will remember that I set it up. Mm -hmm. But you will, be, you will be proud to deal with that company, not because I'm still alive, I'm not there. Mm -hmm. But the fact that the company in itself is a living entity that has its own reputation, regardless of my presence... And what are you doing to make sure that you be, don't become a uh, jack of all trades but master of none? I don't what polish shoes. I don't lay bricks. I don't uh, do fishing. <laughs> I, I, it's not a jack of all trades. There are too many trades no, to be no, jacking. No, 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 no. Not you personally. <laughs> okay. Websoft then becomes, okay. you know, uh, owner of all these entities but no. master of none. No, Websoft it's doesn't web, own Soft web, Group. Soft Group. Yes. Yeah, becomes an owner of all these entities but master of none. How, how are you making sure that you don't fall into Because it's very easy. Exactly. Yeah, you have all these companies running but... Perfectly. Yeah. Perfectly. You see, um, I think that when you want to go into something like that, you do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, and like I'm giving you an example of the Hairsoft. Uh, you'll be surprised that the Hairsoft... Um, already have his own identity, okay. When people, I don't. I'm usually not even there. Mm -hmm. You don't see me there. But I make sure that I get the best of the people in town. I poach the best guys, the best people in there. Uh, our supervisor is well trained. She mm -hmm. went particularly to be trained on how to talk to customers okay. intentionally. Okay. okay. So you will not. You will not think that even if you were tempted to think I'm a jack of all trades, you probably think I'm a jack of all the good trades I do. Okay. But I make sure that I do it well. I must come out excellently, even with the hair soft. And that's why I'm putting, make sure I'm putting standards there in fixing softwares and technologies to make sure that you, you see the excellence. What, in do you do, the, what do you do for fun in your leisure time? I listen to messages from pastors. Okay. And wealth. Inspiration. Yes. I listen to Kenneth Hagan, Kenneth Copeland, Bill Weston, Crawford Dollar, Pastor Chris, Dr. Otter Bill. And I listen to some uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend Albert. Okran. So you don't do discos and... Uh, some people think I'm boring. Yesterday we had a party here. Monday we had a party because of my birthday party. Mm -hmm. And I had to do some... Uh, all kind of... All those <laughs> moves, you know? <laughs> I, 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 I don't do disco. Girlfriend, no, girlfriend, girlfriend. I don't see any ring on your hand. <laughs> girls, this is the interesting part. Oh. Are, you, are you available for the girls out there? Me, you're a handsome young man. Any unmarried man is available. Did you hear that? Uh, yes. Uh, Patricia, have you got a number? I want to put the number, <laughs> to put the number on screen. So, <laughs> please, all, okay. all available women out there, I'm going to put the number on screen. Please, please. Don't <laughs> <laughs> we'll put me into trouble. <laughs> but you get time for your girlfriend. How did you know I have a girlfriend? You just assumed. Yeah, I just assumed. Come on, you're a handsome man. You can't be. The girls won't let you walk around free like that. Hi. <laughs> I have time. You have time. <laughs> yes. Are you sure you were here till one a.m. yesterday? Yes, that's why when you when you under, that's why it's difficult for certain young entrepreneurs to actually marry. Mm. If you see the picture you have, you need somebody. She also into IT. She believes in what you're doing. Wait, you are still assuming that I, re no, I really you have you a told girlfriend. You were ten beds and they decided. <laughs> to do that. I had to assume that. Why? Why should I assume? Why shouldn't I assume? The truth is that I'm not really in a very... Uh, I'm still trying to make a decision. I see. Yes, I'm I still see. trying to make a decision. But I'll uh, put the number on screen then. No, I beg. <laughs> <laughs> Save my head. <laughs> well, Godwin, it's been exciting. It's been interesting. And I urge you on to carry on. And, you know, another five years, by the time I come here, I won't be talking no, about just... No, you won't just come here. By the time I come there, exactly. you know, by the time exactly. I come there, we'll exactly. just not be talking about this. By the this. fate of the living God, it will happen. Amen. We'll be starting with <laughs> this big acres of oh. land where your you see it, right? Are, your properties have started going oh, up. Oh, goodness. With all, You're these, my friend. <laughs> with all this technology, which is African-based, you don't need too much air conditioning because we've designed it in a certain way. And I will be glad. And other young men will be following suit. Thank you so, so much. So keep it up. And uh, okay. folks... Personality profile, that's all we do here. Identify something which is positive, which is worth listening to, and then we follow it. So who knows? Maybe you're also a young man out there doing something we don't know. We'll get in touch. We'll bring our cameras and highlight your achievement. My name is Nana Ansakwao. Thanks for watching. Until next week that I come to you with a different personality, have a brilliant week.